Welcome to Change Your Funk to Fun with your host, Mary Mazur. Learn how your body, mind, and spirit operate and learn how to access a sacred, powerful tool called Psych-K to assist you to ignite the wisdom within you to rewrite any limiting beliefs. So please welcome the host of Change Your Funk to Fun, Mary Mazur. Hi, I am Mary Mazur. You are on the Bold Brave TV Network. This is Change Your Funk to Fun. We're in episode eight today. And the topic for today is wholeness within you allows your relationships to blossom. Oh, yes, we're going to be having a lot of fun today. We have an amazing guest on the show, Michael Rogue, and we're going to bring him in shortly. So Michael, for the past 10 years, he has coached over 400 people uh, to create uh, their best lives and in their business and their personal lives and uh, wherever they have dreamed of. So from he has helped people from stay-at-home moms to dads to doctors to professional athletes. So he does not believe there is a one-fit-all approach to healing, which is why he considers uh, the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual aspect of um of his uh, of a person's being is to be very important to to utilize all of those. So in uh, 2022, he became an ordained unity minister and currently serves as the minister of unity spiritual community of Grand Rapids, located in Cascade, Michigan. He has been involved in personal and spiritual growth and development for over 45 years. And for over 45 years, he has studied life and spiritual coaching, neuroscience, psychology, Rechlin uh, character structure, somatic therapy, uh, IFS therapy, sound therapy, different energy modalities like Psyche and Emotion Code, Enneagram, indigenous wisdom teachings like the medicine wheel, prayer, uh, and meditation. He also um, helps clients by helping them uncover their childhood beliefs, develop developmental traumas, and patterned behaviors learned in youth. And he supports them as um, to let them know how, how, how they're feeling again, making it possible to create lives um, filled with safety now and meaning. So lives not dictated by past beliefs or habitual patterns, but lives immersed, oh boy, yes, in the here and now and fully present in the unfolding experience of each moment. So we welcome Michael in. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book coached to greatness unlock your full potential with limitless growth 
published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Mary Mazur. You are on the Bold Brave TV Network. This is Change Your Funk to Fun. We're in episode eight. And this episode is all about wholeness within you allows your relationships to blossom. So we do have a guest, Michael Rogue, that's supposed to be on the show. And we'll see if he jumps on in. <laughs> this is what life is about when you, you know, think you got everything going and everything's all going to work out well. And then all of a sudden, boop, a surprise. <laughs> Something you don't expect happens. I don't know if it was his... Uh, internet or routing we'll we'll find out when he does jump back in but i do have a feeling that michael will be coming in shortly <clears throat> he's an amazing being here amazing man a life coach that i'm so grateful to have uh, met and got to know so and a little bit about michael and i uh he came to one of my psyche workshops. i am a certified psyche instructor i'm about 30 of us across the world that teaches a beautiful way in a very simple fast and effective way to make changes in your life at the subconscious level of the mind. And that's what Psyche helps you with. So anything that you are limited uh, with, you feel limited or blocked, frustrated, challenged, even deep emotions, if you get stuck in a lot of sadness, grieving, or um, shame, guilt, worry, uh, fears, or repetitive patterns, things like that. So um, this is what Psyche helps you with. And Michael came to one of my workshops and learned it. So yes, he is here. So we're gonna bring him in. So perfect, welcome back. <laughs> I was almost going to be going. Yeah, I hope it's okay. Yeah, well, it's great to be here and you'll have to forgive me, but all of a sudden we've had a lot of wind here and it seems like the internet connection is a little bit wonky. So uh, oh. I hope it's coming through on that end. Okay. Yeah, and we'll just trust. We'll trust. We'll ground. There you go. That's um, Mother yeah. Earth, Mother Gaia's uh, elements, right, of the wind. So it's blowing away stuff, yeah. right? That way we can yeah. really land yeah. in. So. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, I think... I think if I'm not mistaken of this idea that you were going to be talking about um, with your guests or with the, the people in your program was this idea of um, wholeness and being in uh, wholeness, allowing your relationships to blossom when you're into wholeness. And, you know, I just really wanted when you mentioned that to me in terms of talking about it, when I'm working with people, I just really wanted to say that it's what happens with people, I think, when they start to do work is it becomes very, very specific and they want to dial in something like they want to work on, you know, they could be working on a lot of different things. Um, but what my experience has been when working with people is if they can think about this standpoint from using the physical, the mental, the emotional and the spiritual and focusing within that the within is the part that's going to really, really help you change the outer. So it's focusing on the inner and the balance within the inner first, and then watching the outer change as a result of that. And so that certainly has been true in my own life. And, and when I say that, I, I'm just going to add this other piece is that I don't think that people think that, well, I can't have bad thoughts or I can't be having a tough time or yeah, Mike, but you don't understand. I I'm in the middle of going through this major upheaval in my life right now. And, and, and so I'm going to have to wait for this. And it's like, no, actually the power comes in embracing what's happening in your life right now, not 
ignoring it or not pretending it's not there. So I do just the opposite with my clients. I want them to embrace everything that's going on in their life, regardless of what it is. Because what's happening is the emotions that you're going through in the time are trying to help you heal. But when you deny, when you don't accept, when you ignore what's going on in your own life, it doesn't allow you to process in order so that you can heal and grow. And that's this idea of really accepting um, what's going on. And so I think it's just a really beautiful process. And, you know, I just unfortunately found out um, some news with a dear, one of my, uh, uh, one of my family members has been diagnosed with a pretty serious condition. Um, and before I just would have just kept my head to the grindstone and run. And I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to sit with that and the grief and the pain that it's causing. And I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to accept it and realize that there's some gifts in there. Oh, oh, thank you for that. Yes. And thank you for coming today, even with right getting that in, that news, even just yesterday or just so soon. Right. That and look at this. What a yeah. perfect example. Right. That you're willing to. Yeah. Move through, share and discuss and um, yeah. Shine your light, even even in when the darkness you know appears. Right. So. It's yeah, it's a, it's even to me, it's even part of the light. You know, and that's to me, I think the deeper I go into my own healing process, my own transformative, uh, transformative process, it's to realize that the, every single part of myself, the parts that are brilliant on spot, do amazing, incredible things, are is just as much a part of me as the parts that are the shadow parts, the parts of me that, that want to freak out <laughs> when things don't go right, the parts that want to run and hide. The parts that, you know, um, certainly in the past, it's getting better, but in the past that I just didn't want to acknowledge, it's, it's the opposite, opposite of that now. Now I'm wanting to embrace all of it. I'm wanting to accept all of me instead of running or ignoring those parts of me. And to me, there's incredible freedom in that. There's incredible free, free, freedom in allowing myself just to be fully human. And that means I've got parts that are really, really good. And I've got parts that I'm still working on and I'm still in the process of um, working on and working through. But in the meantime, I'm going to accept all of them. And there's there's tremendous peace in that. Tremendous peace in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Whew, yes, this is going to be getting juicy here. So with um, with the topic or the, the title, the focus that we're going to be talking about here, wholeness within you allows your relationships mm -hmm. to blossom. The gift here is that we actually are already whole, which you know that too, that at the highest level, we are the I am presence. We are divinity consciousness as a, um, our own individual uni unique strand here, as if we're like the sun ray of the sun, our own unique expression of the oneness energy. And so the, the key piece, I think, that can help a lot of people if they can actually just begin to question things. So that's what I want us to bring in here, too, is begin asking key questions. Begin to just say, what if? What if this could be true? What if maybe I could actually see something from a new th new way that I couldn't before? Because that actually is what's going to help help people realize, like you say, be, uh, be able to move in the level of acceptance that you have done with with what you've been working with yourself for the last 45 years of, of really concentrated effort here and <laughs> concentrated, I know, <laughs> passion. Yeah, because it does take yeah. that. It actually does take the key here is we have to have courage. You have to have a courage. You have to be willing to say, I'm sick of that old way. I'm sick of feeling broken or feeling numb mm -hmm. or denying things. I know that's, I certainly was in that denial category. That's for sure. My dad did the whole numbing thing with the alcohol. And your dad did too. I think that uh, many, mm -hmm. many people will do that or drugs, or maybe there'll be sex addictions or whatever it is. But we do these coping skills for survival. And it's because of the suffering and pain that we're actually feeling. Because I mean, isn't mm -hmm. it fascinating? That when we leave, when we actually raise higher out of the suffering energies up into the suffering pain, and then when it gets, that's when it almost feels worse. But you're actually elevating. We're actually elevating our consciousness, and the key comes in is like you say, um, 
don't just stay there. Keep on moving. Because <laughs> if you keep on moving, <laughs> like you're even saying, instead of denying it or instead of um, pushing it to the side or ignoring it or just say, I just got to be tough, like closing off your heart, closing off our, our emotions or um, things that we had to do out of survival. And because we were in mm-hmm. pain, the, the key comes in is when, how, if you can have courage to say, oh, wow, how about if I actually do the exact opposite of what I really, mm-hmm. you know, my fear part of me wants me to do. How about you You actually move in and do the opposite, which actually means you step right into it, right? You look right in the face of fear, right? Or right in the face yes. of the pain. And like what you're even yeah. doing, you're feeling it. You're letting yourself feel through that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's just it, is that, so for me, any type of emotions when I was growing up, the safest thing for me to do because of the environment that I grew up in was just turn everything off. So what I learned, what I got really good at doing on a very fundamental level was just turn off all the emotions. That way you couldn't feel the pain, which served me incredibly well when I was younger. But then as I got older and started getting on with my life, what I realized is that I was falling flat with my emotions. And this really ties back into what you were saying, Mary, that there needs to come a point where the person says, okay, this is no longer working. In other words, there's got to be something emotionally that says, I want something new. I want something different. And it's got to be enough energy for you to continue on with the process in order for you to have a breakthrough. So it's not just going to be once a, once a year going, you know, I think I want to change that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start January 1st, uh, you know, doing an exercise program. And, and then, and then just be honest about that. How many times do we see that? It's got to be more, there's got to be a certain amount of energy it takes to get you moving towards resolving some of this stuff. And then once you start doing the work, and that's certainly what you do with the psych K and I do with my coaching is that the people start this process. And you're so right when you say that what happens is when people start doing this work at first, it's it feels extremely uncomfortable and it almost feels like, wait a minute, this is getting worse. This was supposed to help me. But if you've been stuck for a long time, there's a phase that you go through where that's exactly what it feels like. And the good news is, is when you're working with somebody like Mary or somebody like uh, me or a coach or something, we're going to let you know, like, no, this is just this is just normal. Um, it, it's just part of the process. Hang in there. Hold on. We're going to be there to support you. We're going to create a safe environment for you to be able to grow through and transform and heal through. Exactly. Exactly. I know uh, in high school, I was a cross country runner. And I remember the first week that I went out there running and I did it because my brothers ran. So I said, all right, sure, I'll do it, too. I had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> sure. Whatever cross country is. Yeah, that first week I was like, what the heck? Like my all my muscles and all my pain. I'm like, what? This is what you do? Are you flipping kidding me? I thought you said yeah. it's fun and exciting and exhilarating, right? It was painful. Mm-hmm. It hurt. All my muscles went, what the heck, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we had to get in shape. We actually had to actually build those, build that foundation, build those muscles, get through things. And it's all about perception. It's all about our perspective. Mm-hmm. If we think it's horrible or think it's worse, that will stop us. And then we'll get back into the rut again, back into the same patterns again. And you never really move forward on anything. The key comes in is when you do actually have the courage. And like you say, you have to have a reason why. You have to have a reason why you're willing to plunge through that. Whether mm-hmm. it is the emotional pieces that um, people, which I would say the big one now is the emotional piece, emotional, emotional and mental, that's for sure. But definitely the emotional pieces. I think most of us, exactly. It wasn't very safe to um, show your emotions when we were growing up. It just wasn't. My Our parents didn't do it very much. And then, we, of course, we learned what they did, right? <laughs> well, no, oh. even, even like you said, I, I think safety is a huge part of the conversation in terms of your environment when you were growing up. And was it safe to express yourself? You know, because there's this idea with your emotions Um, I always say when I'm working with clients, let's see if number one, you can identify what the emotion is. And then let's talk about the, you being able to express it. So for me, it's really a two part process. It's, it's, can you name it and can you express it? And even, and and you would be surprised even, even when I first start with somebody, if they're really cut off, I, can we just start off with this idea of being good and bad? Oh, that's a, that's not a good, that's a good emotion. Okay. That makes me happy. Good. That's a good place to start. That's bad. But the research certainly has been done 
that the better that you can get at defining your emotions, and there are some really great resources for that stuff in terms of being able to get lists of the different levels of emotions, but the better you can get at identifying it, and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of a som somatic practice, and that is where are you feeling it in your body? So for yeah. me, it's what is the emotion I'm feeling it, and then where am I feeling it in my body? Good, okay, great, we got that. And then, and then are you able to express it? How does it, what does it feel like? What, it, what does it need to have happen in order for it to come out? Sometimes, mm -hmm. It's, it's a hug. Sometimes it's, it's tears. You know, certainly with the diagnosis of my family member, um, lots of tears. I mean, and just sitting here shake, literally shaking and trembling and just crying. Um, and, and that just, that's it. The emotions are there. It's energy and motion. That's what emotions is. And it just needs to be allowed to be expressed through your body. And when somebody can learn how to do that, and just let them be expressed, then all of a sudden, the most interesting thing is it just dissipates. Over a certain amount of time, they will eventually dissipate. And then now you go back into self-regulations and now you're back in to a calm, um, a calm state. And But if you don't know that, or if you've been shut off, or if you haven't been safe expressing your emotions, or you don't know how to even identify them, that's where I find the majority of the work with my clients are that are that are shut off from their emotions. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so huge, so huge. So I had a session with you, which was wonderful <laughs> with your life coaching. <laughs> I'm very grateful for. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and with that, how it actually was perfect for this talk today, because in order for me and, and I do, I, I see this as we're always on a journey. So we're always expanding and mm -hmm. testing things out and like you say everything you just described is because we chose to be human here we chose to come to earth here on a planet where there was a bunch of illusions of separation or we call it fear <laughs> and all its cousins right here yeah. and, we, yep. and all of us yep. actually volunteered to come said yes we want to come yes we want to experience this in a physical way bringing mm -hmm. our spirit aspects of ourselves into this beautiful physical body and then with that we do develop these patterns or these um ways of being uh different beliefs, different um, yeah, values that we have that we don't even realize. And a lot of it is um, they were based on the survival or the suffering pain or avoiding suffering and pain in the ways of, of learning mm -hmm. how to cope and to do. And then the, one of the things that I um, definitely uh, cultivated within me is, is I had I didn't even realize it until being in the coaching session with you that helped this this push this aha moment is that I was still settling for things and, and I, yes. I was programmed to do that. Right. Yeah. Like, so I had to, yeah. I had to admit to that. I'm ready to stop settling. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm or playing it small or putting everybody else first, making sure everybody else is okay. And once everybody else is okay, okay, then I'll go make sure I'm okay. I learned that right. very well from my mother and um, others mm -hmm. in my life. And the gift yeah. is, is we don't have to do that anymore. So thank goodness. Thank goodness you helped me with rectifying that. And then there's beautiful tools that we can use that can help us with making these shifts. Yes, I do use Psyche. So Psyche helps me re re with reprogramming my subconscious mind. And I also yeah. um, had a beautiful ayahuasca journey just this past weekend, which I'm so grateful for. Because with grandmother ayahuasca, whoa, will she be able to help me? The reason with the settling that I did Absolutely. It, I had, I thought it believed, it helped me feel safe, secure, and loved. I thought, well, of course, that's why it's going to do that. Because if everybody else is happier, then the energy will be better around me. Yes, it will. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and if yeah. it is, then I will feel much better too. So there was a secondary yeah. gain benefit or, you know, there was a purpose for why it was there. And yeah. I was ready to let it go. So a lot of this happens is because you have, it is in our divine timing. When you are ready to let it go, things are going to happen in your life or in our lives that is going to give you um, triggers or signals or um, very um, interesting situations that, that will come up and appear to help or to help invite you. Like I had in January, I had a crazy thing happen. So that will invite you to do that. And then what I, what I shifted is that it's important to not just let go of things, but to, to replace it with what you do want. And with mm -hmm. Aya, she helped me with cultivating um, really bringing in your heart center, connecting with your heart, because we are heart centered beings, yet we were programmed to live from our minds. So we got lost in the maze, because that's kind of what happened here. And then now, yep. oh, once we recognize in, and the, the big gift that I received is 
is that I'm checking it with myself now. So in order to be able to let go of settling, what do I want mm-hmm. instead? Now I adapt and I expand because I can adapt and shift to things. And I check in with my heart. Does this feel right? And for me, it has to mm-hmm. feel just right. If it feels right mm-hmm. from my heart's desires, from what I'm desiring of how it makes me feel, how I feel about it instead of how everyone else is feeling about it. That was mm-hmm. the humongous game changer for me. Yeah. I can actually yeah. put myself hurt. Yeah. So. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful from the standpoint that you realized that, you know, adjusting and in the conversation, like there, there's a part of us that, that it's, it's okay to like being able to, in the moment, just kind of go with what is, there's nothing wrong with it. But I think for people like you and me, it gets to the point to where, yeah, but we're forgetting to, to put us in the equation. So in other words, it's just like, oh, it seems like it's going this. And instead of just pausing for a minute and go, yeah, but is this what I really want? Like, is this okay? We're so used to just going with what is, again, because of the fact of the the environment that we grew up with, everything else like that. Certainly you came from a big family. I was four kids. I was the youngest of four kids. I was taught to be seen, not to be heard. I got the hand-me-downs. So you talk about the ultimate setup in order for me just to kind of go with the flow and not really check in with myself in terms of what was okay. So my life has been like, well, this is okay. This is okay. This is okay. And what I'm realizing is that there's nothing wrong with settling as long as, and this is the key, am I checking in with myself to make sure that it's okay? Or am I going to the default mode where I'm just like, ah, oh, I, I'm, I'm easy go lucking. I look, I'm easy go, easy going. I can just go with what is. And sometimes, yes, my soul is like, yeah, this is good. This is okay. And other times what I'm noticing is the more I plug into it, I'm like, no, it's not, it's not okay. And that's, that's the work. That's certainly the work for me. And, and, um, I could definitely feel it when we were, when we were together, like there was this settling like as soon as you said the word settle like i I, you know i can settle for you know and i'm like oh oh, whoa 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 hit the brakes (laughs) hit the brakes we need to we need to pause here for a minute oh what a gift yeah we can let go of doing that and i love that and bring in the new way so i am done settling and now i'm adapting and expanding we are going to take a short break Uh, okay i am mary mazer you are on the bold Brave TV Network. This is Change Your Funk to Fun. We will be coming right back, and then we're going to be jumping in of how we can expand in our wholeness, how to adapt, and how to expand. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
All right. I am Mary Mazur. You are on the Bold Brave TV Network. This is Change Your Funk to Fun. Welcome back. Episode eight. Wholeness within you allows you in your relationships to blossom. So, Michael, thank you for being on this show here today. So um, are you good with sharing? What have you done to help yourself become whole again? For those broken parts, those pieces where, right, you've been hurt, you've been harmed, you've had to close off, you had a numb, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think um, it's really comes down to me, you know, we've already started the conversation of emotion and emotional awareness. So mm -hmm. for me, it's about making um, my emotional body, if you will, a top priority. Um, because what I, what I realized and this, this started happening probably 10 or 15 years ago, and it's been accelerating ever since. And especially since I've gone and spent time with you and Psyche K and some other programs I've done and some journeys I've been on. Um, what I've realized is just how shut down I've been. And so with that comes this idea of okay, then what do I need to do to get back in touch with my feelings? How can I, how can I really start to pay attention to them? So um, in light of that, there's been a couple of things that I've really, so number one, I'm going to make, I'm going to make my emotional awareness a top priority. And so mm -hmm. that to me is being able to getting back to some of the stuff is paying attention to my emotions and being able to start identifying them, like I mentioned, and then also processing them. And so some of the work that I do is shadow work. And I do some of that work with myself and my clients. And that, in other words, instead of running, numbing, denying, ignoring my emotions, now it's kind of like I've developed a radar system where I can tell when, when my emotions are coming up. And if I know that they're coming up, instead of running from them, I am intentionally going to slow down and give myself space to just be with my emotions and let them express. So that is a foreign, that was a foreign lang language to me earlier in my life where this is that, this, that process never took place. I was so shut down and now I'm just giving myself more and more space to let the emotions come and accept them and not question them and not deny the pain that often happens when you first start doing this work. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is becoming more and more aware of these different parts of myself. So in the last, um, I would say in the last year and a half to two years, for those people that are familiar with uh, internal family systems, sometimes referred to as IFS, I've been very involved with that, not only actually having somebody I work with and do my personal work with IFS, but then I'm also in the process of going through some of the uh, certification process for IFS. And so for those who don't know, IFS has a basic core understanding that we're not just one, we're actually several different parts. And the, the goal in, in IFS is I understand it. And certainly if you were to talk to different practitioners, you'd probably have them explain this a little bit differently. But the way that I understand it, is imagine all of these parts just in a great big ball. And so you're sitting here with this great big ball and everything is intertwined and it's really hard to tell what all the parts are. And in the process of IFS, as I understand it, what happens is you start to slowly kind of pull this ball apart so that you can start to identify the different parts. And then by mm -hmm. understanding what these, and some of the parts are very helpful. They're very, um, they're very whole, they're very healed, they're very supportive, they're very loving, they're caring. And then some of the parts, especially when we go back into earlier childhood where there has been some wounding, is to go back in there and go through the process where you can start to connect with those parts again, because those parts are just sitting there waiting for, for something to show up or somebody to show up to basically um, help them basically heal so that they can be heard, so they can be valued, so they can be honored. And again, this is my language. It's not gonna be the language that everybody uses to explain it, but what IFS has allowed me to do is to understand these different parts. And so now I'm able to identify when these different parts up, these different parts show up and I can have conversations with these parts to support them and let them know that I'm here, that I love them, 
that even the ones that are <clears throat> not happy, that it's okay for them not to be happy. And then I just want to spend as much time as I can. I want to listen to them. I want to hear what the message does they have to say. And the interesting thing about doing IFS work is when you can give them the space to be heard, to be valued, to be honored, to be loved. Um, those parts have a tendency over time, they'll start to calm down. And so you don't have as much of a, a reaction. In other words, um, some of the words that people will use are triggers, those start to calm down and I'm able to identify them. So um, you asked a big question, but to me, it's, it's all, all of it is about me going inside and really understanding what's happening inside of me internally. And to me, it's all the emotions. And that is where my work has been. Um, and certainly Psyche K has been a part of that process. And then other modalities that I use with my coaching clients as well to help them really get in touch so they have an understanding of what's going on inside of them and to realize mm -hmm. that you really can love all of the parts and work on all of the parts in your healing journey. And so I would say that's probably been the most powerful, powerful thing that I've done over the past couple of years to help me finally realize that I'm okay. All of me is okay. Every mm -hmm. part of me is okay. And that's been a beautiful, and I, you know, like everybody else, I'm still, I'm, I still have my work to do. Um, but this is incredibly helpful to me um, and the people that I work with. So it's been, uh, it's, it's been, it's been a wonderful journey. Yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then with the gift, right, when I do uh, work with uh, clients using psyches, yeah, I've expanded a bit right with my giftings, my spiritual giftings, as far as with helping that journey with them, too. So it's actually very similar to IFS, which is really kind of funny how it yeah. just kind of land in there where I help them, um, you know, move into their heart. They actually where they can feel really, um, you know, they feel that openness, that safety and uh, mm -hmm. and access those parts of them going to uh, whatever issues they're dealing with, right? Let's go back to the timeline where it actually began, you know, in this lifetime. And yes. it may be connected to other lifetimes too. And we're in this lifetime. So if it is even in a lot of lifetimes, just bring it on into this one <laughs> to help mm -hmm. um, shift it. In. And there's, there's plenty in this one. Yeah. And what a gift. So I've even had like that, that part of them, that child um, aspect of them that like you said, did, did experience those hurts or, or then became wounded and stuff that they actually get to speak to them. And when they yes. actually can have a voice again, that's the key. That part of you needs to have a voice. We need to listen to that part, access that part of us, listen to that part of us. Right. And then, then you can come shift into, wow, knowing you are heard, you are mm -hmm. felt it's okay. And however yeah. we're feeling at those pieces is okay because we have a right yeah. to feel it's just the experiences that we're having. And then we get a shift into how do you want to be in your new way? Right. So because of that meaning, what are the lessons that you can learn from this experience? It actually is happening for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is happening to us. And once you can realize it's actually here for you, then mm -hmm. the gift comes in is when you can start looking at where are the gifts, where are the treasures, where are the, the pieces that we are, or we are bringing to ourselves so we can become um, whole in a whole new way, because we actually, it's like the, the uh, Japanese vase that I forgot the name of what it's called, but basically a broken vase that they reseal up with gold, gold mm -hmm. coloring, gold leather, yeah. right? That that's mm -hmm. what we get to do with our own hearts and our own aspects of ourselves that we have exiled or are um, shun away or um, hid things like that. How about we, mm -hmm invite those parts back into our hearts again. And because I, I believe at the deepest level, most of us have aspects of ourselves like that. And at, and at the um, heart of it all is that we, we, we want to be loved. You know, we want to be heard and seen. And, you know, it's that beautiful attention that we get to have of just knowing, wow, like mm -hmm. you are perfect just the way you are. You're so unique and amazing. And that, right, have that, uh, the wonder and the, uh, yeah, the deep, deep love. So, and we all you know, can have, we all reach that within ourselves. You know, Mary, I think you bring up a really, uh, a really powerful point. Um, and it's something that I'm talking about, um, at unity. And it's this idea of when you go through something like this, um, I, I say that there are different, um, phases that we go through in these things. And, and the one, the first phase I would say is um, there's there's something that we're wanting to do and grow through uh, on a soul level. And so what we do is we create the right, it's called the setup. 
So we create mm -hmm. the right people, places, things, circumstances that are going to create this event that's going to happen, that's going to give you the opportunity if you decide to really take you to the next level of whatever your soul is wanting to learn. And so there's the setup. And then all of a sudden what happens is there's this piece that's called the sacred wound. And the sacred wound is what happens. Like you go through this. Like for me, the sacred wound right now is like, you know, this family member has been diagnosed with cancer. They're, they're, and, and with that wound, the sacred wound, then comes sacred suffering. And that is something everybody has experienced in their own lifetime. And in some cases, it could be the, the something that you've been dealing with your entire lifetime. But in this case, it's like, okay, great. But the part that I don't think people talk about enough, and you just said it, is what I believe, and I know this to be true because I've experienced this in every one of the times that I've gone through that, especially now that I'm more aware of it, is what I would call is the sacred opening. And the sacred opening is you are cracked open on a soul level and that crack allows the light to come in and allows you to see something differently than you could have seen it before you went through this process. And by going through the process, even though there's pain and it can be uncomfortable, in some cases, extremely uncomfortable, and there's a lot of tears and a lot of sadness and a lot of stuff. But even in all of that, if you can just hang in there for a minute and just trust, okay, where is it? Where is it? Um, my experience has been that there's always a sacred opening. And if you can just try to your best to be with that and understand that it will show up in the entire process, there's some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things that can come forward. It's there. That mm -hmm. sacred opening is there. And those gifts are there for you on a soul level to take you mm -hmm. to an entirely new level. That's been my experience. And that's that's something I really do believe. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's the analogy of um, the woman carrying the two pots and one is a whole pot that we think is all whole and the other one has a crack in it, right? And as she, to carry the water to the village. And as she gets there, she doesn't realize that that crack, the one that's actually cracked is the one that's watering the ground, the sea. Mm -hmm. So then that noticed in a short time that that was the side that had all the flowers and all the growth. When you actually yeah. can open, <laughs> yes, it mm -hmm. is through a break, a breakthrough. Uh, mm -hmm. that we do exactly more can blossom and more can grow and what a, what a precious gift and that's what we're meant to do with our hearts let it open let it break open yeah. and let the light shine in like you say and let the seeds um plentiful into the blossoming but we are going to take a short break so the i know you have another great thing that you're going to bring in we'll bring it in yeah. when we come back so i am mary mazer you are on the bold brave tv network this is change your funk to fun and we'll be right back <laughs> Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Mm. 
Welcome back. I am Mary Mazur. You are on the Bold Brave TV network. This is Change Your Funk to Fun. Oh, wholeness within you allows your relationships to blossom within you and all your relations outside of you. So thank you for Michael for being on this um, podcast today. And yes, would you love to give the antidote to everything or the, the real um, crux of it all? <laughs> so, <laughs> What's the solution? You know, we, we've solution? been talking about this idea of this process and going through it and the, this idea of going through you know, this, this setup, and then we've got this wounding, and then we've got this opening. And, and the thing that I really want to tell people is that that model can be shifted. In other words, we don't have to keep following that model. And my experience is, and I really do believe this, that humanity is in the process of shifting. And because of it, we don't have to go through all of that. And what I'm inviting, not only myself, is my clients and anybody that's willing to listen is we don't have to follow that model anymore. There doesn't need to be this wounding. There doesn't need to be the suffering. There doesn't need to be, the opening can be much more gentle. And actually, why don't we throw some joy in there? Why don't we show, throw some fun in there? Why don't we add laughter in there and, and allow us to go through these processes so much easier. And I really do believe that that's where we're going. And I would just end by inviting your, um, your, your people that are listening to this program to give yourself permission to not have to follow the old model. Yes, I love it. Just say, hey, I welcome the new way, right? I, I welcome, welcome the, the new, new way. way. Yeah. yeah, yes, exactly. And I know you and I and actually two of our other friends, um, Michelle and Bear, are going to be offering something new in the end of May, too. So we will let people know about that, too, um, today, too, that yes. And I love what we're going to be offering, too, is authentic circles of connection, because the key comes in is connection, connecting back to who we really are. So this discovering that going into your heart and saying, wow, who am I? You know, what is that connecting, falling in love with your own self again? That is how mm -hmm. that is where the wholeness is forgiving and letting go of the things that have happened because we can, right? And then allow yourself, like you say, to become um, open, curious. Can we actually ask questions like, what if, what if positive? What would I love to have things happen? Let our focus be on what we do want and move forward there. Instead of just keeping the focus of all the hurts and the wounds or the pains or the sorrows. Okay, yeah, those are there, absolutely. They're here for us and what we get to grab, how about we look for the gems that are in there? What, what ask even um, smarter questions like, huh, I wonder how that showed up or why up for me. wonder what it's here for me for. Because I know once you realize and you wake up and realize everything is here for you and for your good, the whole game changes. The whole game changes. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, it really, it's stepping back fully into your power and stepping back into your pure divinity when all of a sudden you realize, oh, okay, for whatever reason, this thing is happening. All right, there was something I wanted to learn through this. Great, let's learn it, see what's there for me, dive into it, and then move forward. And it's no longer this woe is me, the Maya Copa, Maya Copa, and, and everything else that we've been born with. It just, it's such a lighter, it becomes a very lighter journey, a much lighter journey. Yes, thank you, thank you. All right, so how may people reach, reach you, find you? <laughs> yeah, so my website is www.michaelroque, that's R O C Q U E dot com. And in there, you're going to have several options there. If you just want to chit chat for a minute, you can just, my email address is michael at courage to thrive dot com, is the best way to get a hold of me directly. Other than that, my website is out there as well. Oh, wonderful. Yes, I know, because I love the whole the, um, co life coaching is a beautiful gift that we can give ourselves. That's for sure. <laughs> Because you yeah. can help us see things that we're, we're blinded to or aren't able to see so that we can make, yeah, a more direct path for the changes and then actually really actually, um, yeah, have an accountability partner to help us, you know, yeah. make yeah. those changes. I do some talks. Uh, I do talks on uh, on Sunday morning as well. So, mm -hmm. again, this is my part as a unity minister. So at um, our, our center is Unity Spiritual Center of Grand Rapids. And so we are live on YouTube uh, Sunday mornings at 1030 Eastern Standard Time for anybody that just needs a little boost on the Sunday morning. The All the talks are recorded. So there's a bunch of them in there and a uh, little shot to of inspiration just to, to help throughout the course of the week. 
Oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And if anyone wants to reach yeah. me, they can go to my website, igniteandhealyourlife.com. So that's igniteandhealyourlife.com. And that's in case they want private sessions, they can do a private session one-on-one -on -one for um, an hour at a time. And, uh, and we are creating a whole new event. So that's the last weekend in May, May 30th to June 1st. So there'll be a Thursday evening and then all day Friday, all day Saturday. Yes, where people are going to move through the medicine wheel, move through the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual parts of us and to allow ourselves to become reconnected back within ourselves so we can have a deeper, more authentic relationship within our own selves and with others. We're going to be doing a lot of um, experiential Practice, uh, practices and uh, opportunities to really fully uh, return back to our balance again. So I'm super excited and thrilled for that. And uh, yeah, we're here for lots of offerings. And the Psyche is also great, right, for making those changes, you know, where if you're in a funk, heck yeah, give me a call because I can help you return back to having fun again. <laughs> And it works pretty pretty quick and pretty fast, which is pretty awesome. I also te teach Psyche workshops. I'm having one, an online one this weekend. So that will, um, people would have to register by tomorrow to uh, jump into that one. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I'm also, um, in April, I'll be teaching in Florida the first weekend of April, April 5th to the 7th. It's a three-day in-person workshop. That's the kind of the one that you came to was the in-person one that helped mm -hmm. you really crack open, which is really cool, and open mm -hmm. up. And then, yeah, and then April 23rd weekend, I'm doing online. In May, I'll be teaching in North Carolina and Tennessee. So you can look at that. And uh, yeah, the thing is, is get curious because, hey, might as well have this tool for yourself like you and I did, right? And that's how I feel. I'm like, why not, right? How about something you can Amen. use each, time, each day and help help us with, um, yeah, to help us uh, feel the wholeness that we are so that our uh, relationships may blossom. So beautiful day today yeah. with you, Michael, as always. And we will end this show now. Exactly. I am Mary Mazer. You are on the Bold Brave TV network. This is Change Your Funk to Fun. Have a beautiful day. Aho. This has been Change Your Funk to Fun with host Mary Mazer. Tune in each week and ignite the courage within you to take meaningful changes in your life and allow the fun, joy, and love in your life to awaken. Wednesdays, 3 p.m. here on the Bold Brave TV network.